Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of www.doomandbloom.net, where you'll find over 700 posts, videos, and podcasts on medical preparedness for any disaster. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, a nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the three-category Amazon bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook, also the New York Times bestseller in health, the Ebola Survival Handbook, and even the designers of the new board game, Doom and Bloom Survival, a fun and challenging way to get the whole family off the their smartphones and thinking about preparedness. Now, in remote settings where modern medical help is not an option, there'll be a number of deaths that occur from injuries and infections incurred in the performance of activities related to survival. Many wounds will be dirty, they'll become infected, and they'll lead to what otherwise would be avoidable fatalities. Now, I first realized the importance of antibiotics as a survival medicine item after watching the History Channel special After Armageddon. In the program, the Johnson family survives a major pandemic and eventually joins a community. While performing some of the chores assigned to him, the patriarch of the family cuts himself, the cut becomes infected, and he, a paramedic, finds that there are no antibiotics in the medical storage of the group. His infection finds its way into his bloodstream and he dies slowly over the next two weeks. This death was avoidable. An effort to both include antibiotics in the medic supplies and learn how to use them would have saved Mr. Johnson and could save many others in a long-term catastrophe. There are many antibiotics, but what antibiotics accessible to the average person would be good additions to your medical storage? When do you use a particular drug? The wrong antibiotic at the wrong time? can be just as bad as doing nothing at all. You should have both quantity and variety to be effective as a medic in a long-term survival setting. Now, before I go any further, let me make it clear that posts and videos that we do pertain to situations where modern medical care is not available. Now, in that circumstance, you have become the highest medical resource that your family has. In normal times, seek qualified professionals wherever and whenever you need help. Clindamycin is our next antibiotic in this series that explores med use and survival. It's available in human pharmacies as cleosin and as fish sin in aquatic form. It's part of the family of drugs called lincomycin antibiotics, and it, like azithromycin or ZPAC, works by slowing or stopping the growth of bacteria. Clindamycin works best on bacteria that are anaerobic, which means that they don't require oxygen to multiply. It can be used to treat various infections, including acne, dental infections, soft tissue infections of the skin, things like that, peritonitis, which is an inflammation of the belly seen in appendicitis and other medical issues, some pneumonias, some lung abscesses, uterine infections, such as you might see after childbirth or miscarriage, blood infections, pelvic infections, even MRSA infections, methicillin-resistant Staph aureus infections, and even some parasites and anthrax. It should be noted that although a certain antibiotic may be effective against a certain infection, that it may not be the most effective. These are called drugs of first choice, and they can change as new antibiotics are developed or new research becomes available. Clindamycin is given in 150 milligram or 300 milligram doses about every six hours with a glass of water. It should be used with caution in people who have a history of gastrointestinal disease as it can cause diarrhea during treatment. Sometimes a very serious colitis or infection of the intestine can develop. Now, if the clindamycin causes diarrhea in your patient, stop the drug immediately. This drug is also like azithromycin, pregnancy category B, which means that no ill effects have been determined in pregnant animal studies. Drug testing is rarely done on pregnant humans, so very few pharmaceutical companies are willing to guarantee complete safety during pregnancy. Clindamycin is acceptable for use in patients with penicillin allergies. This is not to say that you might not have an allergy to clindamycin itself, however. Although most medical training is geared toward dealing with injuries, the wise medic will make an effort to learn more about how to identify and treat infections. It will greatly increase his or her effectiveness in disasters or other times of trouble. This is Joe Alden, MD, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching.